3-4, Solving Multi-Step Inequalities. <coughs> so our objective for this section is to solve multi-step inequalities. And our essential understanding is that you can solve a multi-step inequality in the same way you can solve a one-step inequality. We're going to use the properties of inequality to transform the original inequality into a series of simpler equivalent expressions. And then we are going to isolate the variable and write our inequality. Okay. So in this problem, we can see that there is more than one thing that we're going to have to do. In order to isolate the variable, in order to get 4t by itself, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a minus 9 from both sides. That leaves me with 4t is greater than 12. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And of course, remember that you should always be aware of the rule that we talked about in the last section, is that if you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you have to reverse the sign. This is, of course, not a negative number, so we just have that t is greater than 3. Okay? So if I want to check this, I can check to see is 9 plus 4 times 3 equal to 21? And 9 plus 12 plus 9 plus 12 is 21. Okay, so that's good. So now I should pick a number bigger than 3 to see if <coughs> the inequality remains true. Okay. Let's look at a got a problem. So let's look at all these different problems and see if we can solve them all and get my solutions. So for the first one, for part A, we have that 6A minus 7, or negative 6A minus 7, is less than or equal to 17. So my first step is going to be to add 7 to both sides. So we're going to get negative 6A is less than or equal to 24. And like I said before, when we divide both sides, by a negative number, you have to remember to reverse the inequality sign. So it's going to be A is greater than or equal to negative 4. All right. So for part B, we're going to isolate my variable again. So my first step is to subtract 5 from both sides. That's going to be negative 9 is less than negative 3n. Dividing both sides by negative 3 again remember to reverse the inequality sign. <coughs> Even with decimals, okay? Same steps. Subtract 30 from both sides. So now we have 20 is greater than 0.8x. Now when I divide both sides by 0.8, dividing by a decimal doesn't do anything to my inequality because it's not negative, okay? And then 20 divided by 0.8 is 25. It's been greater than x. You can adapt familiar formulas to write inequalities. We can use real-world situations to determine what inequality symbol to use. For instance, <coughs> in this geometry problem with a garden. So, in a community garden, you want a fence in a vegetable garden that is adjacent to your friend's garden. You have, at most, 24, 42 feet of fence. What are the possible lengths of your garden? Well, if you want to fence a garden, right, you're going to have to put one side, two sides, three sides, four sides to have a complete fence. Okay, so if I want to know the distance around some sort of figure, that's usually the perimeter. So the perimeter is going to be twice the length plus twice the width. Well, I know the width of the garden. It has to be 12 feet because it has to match up with the neighbors or else it will look weird, right? Now, when I think about what I have here, I have at most 42 feet of fence. 
that's all I have. So the perimeter has to be less than that. Okay. So we can say that 2 times the length plus 2 times 12 has to be less than or equal to 42 because that's all the fence that I have. Okay. So we can now solve this inequality. So I would have 2L plus 24 is less than or equal to 42. Subtract 24 from both sides to give me that 2L is less than or equal to 18. Divide out the 2 to give me that L is less than or equal to 9. Okay, so the length of the garden must be 9 feet or less, and you would still then have some leftover fence to use. Let's look at a Gata problem. You want to make a rectangular banner that is 18 feet long. You have no more than <coughs> 48 feet of trim for the banner. What is the possible widths of the banner? Okay. So when you have a problem like this, you should probably sort of try to sketch it out. Okay. So let's make a nice rectangular banner. Watch this. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay. So it is 18 feet long. What are the possible widths of the banner? So that size 18 feet, that size 18 feet. Okay. So again, my perimeter is equal to two times the length plus two times the width. Um, we only have, we have no more than 48 feet of trim. So that means around the outside, I can't have more than 48 feet. So we're gonna say that two times the it's long, so 2 times 18 plus 2 times the width has to be less than or equal to 48. So 2 times 18 is 36. Subtract the 36 from both sides. Let's get a little more room here. Oops. A little more room. Get rid of this. Okay. <coughs> Gives me... 2w is less than or equal to 12. Divide out the 2, and we have what w is less than or equal to 6. Okay, so that means in order to have a rectangle, that side has to have some sort of width. So we can't have the width be 0, so it has to be greater than 0 and less than or equal to 6. We'll talk about how to write things like that in a later section. So next, okay, which is a solution of three times t plus one less minus four t is greater than or equal to five. So for this, we're gonna have to use the distributive property and let me rewrite this problem. t plus one minus four t is greater than or equal to negative five. So I wanna use the distributive property first. I wanna distribute the three across the addition and get 3t plus 3 minus 4t is greater than or equal to negative 5. Combining the like terms gives me a minus t plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 5. Subtract the 3. Now, of course, remember that when we solve this and we divide both sides by negative 1, we will have t is less than or equal to 8. So remember to change the sign of the inequality when we multiply or divide by a negative. So many people forget that it is impossible to say it too much. Oh, whoops. So let's check out this problem right here. So we have a 15 is less than or equal to 5. Let's just distribute the 2 right from here. So that's minus 8m minus 14. Okay. Combine the like terms. So that's 15 is less than or equal to negative 9 minus 8m. Add 9 to both sides, which gives me 24 is less than or equal to negative 8m. And again, I am dividing 
by a negative number probably included so much in this section to make sure that you remember to switch the inequality sign. Some inequalities have variables on both sides of the inequality symbol. You need to gather the variable terms on one side of the inequality and the constant terms on the other side in order to solve. So, <laughs> when I do this, I still have the same situation I did when I had an equation with variables on both sides. It's usually easier, and especially with inequalities, where we have to worry so much about negative variables or negative coefficients in front of the variable, it's easier to bring the smaller coefficient to the larger coefficient. So I would solve this problem first by gathering the ends on the left-hand side. So that would turn into 3n minus 1 is greater than 8. Add 1 to both sides, and we have 3n is greater than 9. Divide out the 3 to give me n is greater than 3. Okay. Let's look at a got it problem. Again, I would see a positive 3, a negative 2. Let's add 2b to both sides first. That gives me 5b plus 12 is greater than 27. Now I subtract 12 from both sides to give me 5b is greater than 15. Divide out the 5 to give me b is greater than 3. So in first step in problem 4 was to subtract 3n from both sides of the inequality. What else could have been the first step? Well, we could have very simply subtracted 6n from both sides. And now that would give me negative 1 is greater than negative 3n plus 8. Subtract 8 from both sides, that's negative 9 is greater than negative 3n. But now when I divide, I just have to be careful to switch the inequality sign. And in my first answer, I got that n was greater than 3. And in this one, I got that 3 is less than n. It means the same thing, right? Using the reflexive property to flip those around. Okay? So you still get the same answer, but having to remember to switch the inequality sign just gives you one more chance to make a mistake. That's why you want to do this the way we did it first. Okay. Sometimes solving an inequality gives a statement that is always true, like 4 is greater than 1. In that case, the solutions are all real numbers. If the statement is never true, like 9 is less than or equal to negative 5, then the equality has no solutions. And this happens when all the variables cancel out and you look to see whether the statement is true or false. So, uh, we got 10 minus 8a is greater than 10 minus 8a. And I think you could see that when I add 8a to both sides, they cancel out and it says 10 is greater than or equal to 10. Well, 10 is equal to 10, so this is true. So the solution is all real numbers. Okay. <laughs> what are the solutions for 6m minus 5 is greater than 7m plus 7 minus m? Well, this is 6m minus 5 is greater than 7 minus 1, 6m plus 7. Now, you can't just look at this and say that it's not the same, so there's no solution, like you could with an equation. When we subtract 6m, we have that negative 5 is greater than 7. That is not true, so this has no solution. No solution. No solution. Okay. Let's look at our got it problems. Um, so let's just subtract 5n from both sides, which gives me 9 is less than or equal to negative 1. That has no solution. It's not true. This one <coughs> says 8 plus 6x is greater than or equal to 
7 minus 1, 6x plus 2. The 6x's cancel when I subtract them off both sides. And we have that 8 is greater than or equal to 2. This is true. So the answer here is all real numbers. Okay. And then there's another way that we'll learn in the next section about how to uh, represent that set of numbers. Okay, so let's do our lesson check. Uh, <coughs> solve each inequality. <coughs> excuse me. Solve each inequality. If possible, if the inequality has no solution, write no solution. If it's all real numbers, write all real numbers. Okay. So for the first one, you would just subtract seven from both sides, divide by six, and you would have that a is greater than two. For the second one, distribute the two, subtract off the three, and you would have t is less than or equal to five. Uh, this one, my first step is to subtract negative four from both sides. That would be 2z minus 15 is less than 11. Add the 15, divide by two, and we would get z is less than 13. Okay. And for this one, when I distribute the three, I'm gonna have 18x on both sides. And we're going to have that <coughs> negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 6, which is not true. Negative 6 is less. So this has no solution. Uh, number 5 is the same as some of the problems that we did before. The perimeter is at most 24. Two opposite sides are both 4. So we're going to say that 2 times 4 plus 2 times the other side is going to be less than or equal to 24. 24 is the most it could be. So that's 8 plus 2w is less than or equal to 24. Subtract the 8 from both sides. And we get 2w less than or equal to 16. So w is less than or equal to so that means that the other side of the rectangle could be anywhere between 8 or 0 and 8. How can you tell that an inequality has no solution just by looking at it? Uh, well, it says greater than. Same set of variables on both sides. 1 is not greater than 2 because the 3t is going to cancel out. Can you solve the equation? Oh, this is a good one. Can you solve the inequality without using the distributive property? So I have 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 10. <laughs> you can always solve equations or inequalities in this method if you don't want to use the distributive property, provided the other side is divisible by 2. You could divide out the 2 to give me x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5. And then add 3 to both sides, giving you x is less than or equal to 8. Okay. Now, sometimes that's faster. Sometimes it's not faster. Sometimes it's better to use the distributive property because these two terms might give you a fraction or a decimal. Your friend says, <coughs> number 8, your friend says that the solutions to the inequality are all real numbers. Well, this would be, well, let's clear this out a little bit. This would be negative six plus two X is greater than two X minus six. The X's cancel out, but negative six is not greater than negative six. It would be true if it said greater than or equal to. Okay? Make sure you realize the difference. And that is 3-4, solving multi-step inequalities.